All right, let's look at our next example here. A rectangular garden is five feet longer than it is wide. If the perimeter is 266 feet, what is the area? So again, we'll draw a rectangle. We'll label it length and width. And again, the length, the rectangular garden is five feet longer than it is wide. So that means the L is W plus five. If the perimeter is 266 feet, now, perimeter is the distance around the object. So I would have two L's, two lengths, two widths, added together to equal the perimeter. So if we put in W plus 5 for this L right here, that's 2 times W plus 5 plus 2W equals 266. Distribute the 2. 2w plus 10 equals 2w. Combine the like terms. 2w plus 2w is 4w. We can solve this for the width. Subtract over the 10. Gives us 256. 256 divided by 4 is 64. That's my width. Then my length is 64 feet. Plus 5 is 69 feet. Multiply the two dimensions together. We get 4,416 feet squared. The base of a triangle is seven inches more than four times its height. The area of the triangle is 156 square inches. What is the base and the height? So I'll draw a triangle. Down here is the base. Now the height is from the highest point on your triangle straight down to the base. That's my height. And it says the base of a triangle is, so B is seven inches more then 4 times the height, so 4h plus 7. Again, this does not have to be drawn to scale. We just want to label it. The area of the triangle, okay, we need our area formula. 1 half times the base times the height is 156. And what I encourage you to do here is we don't want to work with fractions. So I want to get rid of 1 half by multiplying by its reciprocal 2 to both sides. The 2 times a half becomes 1, that's canceled, and now we have B times H equals 312. And like we did earlier, base 4H plus 7, we're going to plug that in there with parentheses around it. Distribute your H to get 4H squared plus 7H. We'll subtract over the 312, so it's set equal to 0. And again, here's another problem where this would be too ugly to attempt to factor or use completing the square, so we're going to go to the quadratic formula. A is 4, B is 7, and C is a negative 312. So I go to my calculator, store the 4 in for A, store the 7 for B, and store the negative 312 for C. Now the nice thing here is, is what I can do is that I can just go back, in my calculator, arrow up, find this formula that we did on a previous problem, highlight it, hit enter, and then we'll restore it for H instead of the W I think we had before. And this comes out to be exactly 8, which is fine. All right, that's your height. Then we can find 4H plus 7. We can either have the calculator do it, or we can go 4 times 8 is 32 plus 7 more is 39 and there is the dimensions of my triangle. The base is 39 feet, the height was 8 feet. Found that right here. Alright, the Sun casts a shadow of a flagpole. The length of its shadow is 5 times the height of the flagpole. The distance between the end of the shadow and the top of the flagpole is 204 feet. The height of the flagpole is blank feet, oops, going the wrong way here, and the length of the shadow is blank feet round to the nearest integer. Okay, so that's to the nearest whole number. All right, so let's draw a triangle here. Here's my flagpole casting a shadow, which is on the ground, and this is the ray of the sun, that hypotenuse. So here's the height of my triangle, that's the height of the flagpole, and here's my length or the base of the triangle. You can label it whatever you wish. And now that 
was given to us that the length of the shadow is 5 times the height. So that's going to equal 5h. And they said the distance between the end of the shadow to the top of the flagpole is 204 feet. So that's this segment right here. So using your Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. c squared is always the hypotenuse. a and b are always the sides of the 90 degree angle in your triangle. We're going to have h squared plus 5h being squared. It's got to be in parentheses. Equals 204 squared. So 5 squared, that's going to be 25 h squared. Adding 1 h to that makes it 26 h squared. And notice that I have not squared 204 yet because I'm going to prefer to let my calculator do it. I'm going to divide over the 26. Still haven't taken the square, the square of that yet. Now to solve for h, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So the height of 204 squared over 26 Go to my calculator, I type that in just as I see it, I get 40.00769. They said round it to the nearest integer. So the height of my flagpole is 40 feet. Now what's the length of the shadow? Then we're going to take 40, plug it in for h here, 5 times 40, that's going to be 200 feet. All right, next example. The height h in feet of a ball thrown by a child is h equals negative 1 14th d squared plus 2d plus 4, where d is the horizontal distance in feet from where the ball is thrown. So here's the situation. Here we have our child throwing a ball up into the air, seeing how far he can throw it and it's going to land on the ground. Now, the first question says, how high is the ball when it leaves the child's hand? So that means your D is a distance of zero. So if we put zero in both Ds, all you're left with is the positive four. So that's four feet off the ground right here when it leaves his hand. Part B, when the ball first reaches 14 feet above the ground, it is blank feet horizontally from the child. So what they're informing us is, is that here is my throw. At some point in time, it's going to hit 14 feet. It'll keep going up. And then it's going to descend and hit 14 feet again. So we want to find out is what's the D that's going to get us that first 14 feet. So we're going to need our quadratic formula. We're going to take our formula up here and set h equal to that 14 feet right there. Well, if we want it to be a quadratic equation, we have to set it equal to 0. So we subtract the 14 over from the 4. And now we get a negative 1 14th d squared plus 2d minus 10. Now, this is strictly up to you. It's optional here. I don't like to work with fractions. I like to have my d squared be a positive number. You don't have to, but it's easier to work with. You could go to the quadratic formula and let a equal a negative 1 14th b equal a positive 2, c equals a negative 10, but then you're going to be putting a fraction down here in the denominator of a fraction. So one thing I can do here is you can multiply this denominator 14. In fact, I'm going to make it a negative 14 to both sides. 0 times negative 14 is not going to change anything, but negative 14 times negative 1 over 14 is going to make this a 1. Then I'm going to have minus 2 times 14, 28, then plus 140. So now typing in a is a 1 is easier, easier than a negative 1 14. b is negative 28, c is 140. And now we're going to store those values in your calculator. 
and we're going to type in both the plus or the minus and notice that the plus sign gave us a bigger answer and the minus sign of our quadratic formula gave us the smaller answer so this is when my distance is 6.5 feet away from the child is when it's going to hit 14 feet then it will come on the way down I'll be 21.5 feet away from the child. So it said round to the nearest tenth, so 6.5. That's the first time the ball hits 14 feet in the air. Then over here at 21.5 feet, we'll be at 14 feet above the ground. All right, NASA launches a rocket at T equals zero seconds. Its height in meters above sea level as a function of time is given by h of t equals a negative 4.9 t squared plus 337 t plus 409. The rocket will reach its peak height of 6,203.3 meters above sea level at how many seconds? Round to the nearest tenth of a second. Okay, I'm going to go back to this picture here and I'm going to take something I noticed that this negative B over 2A, this part right here, is what cuts this curve in half. And then when I minus this part, that took me back to 6.5 feet. When I add that, that takes me forward that value. So in terms of my rocket here, okay, my rocket's taking off right here. At t equals 0, 409 feet. So this will be seconds. This y-axis is going to be the h of t in meters. And right here, where it crosses the y-axis, that's when t is equal to 0. It's at 409 meters off the ground. It might be launching this off of a cliff or something, something nearby. Then the rocket is going to go up in the air as time ticks by. This Please understand, it's not the path of the rocket. This is just comparing t in seconds with the height. And it's going to give us a parabola shape. Now, up here at the very top is the 6,203.3 meters. And as I was mentioning, in your quadratic formula, right here at the very top, if you draw a line straight down, that's where your negative b over 2a value is at. <clears throat> if I add the, b, the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, that takes me to this point on the x-axis when it's equal to 0. Because remember, we set the equation equal to 0 to solve it. If I were to subtract this fraction, that puts me at this x-intercept. So uh, understanding how the graph works of a quadratic equation, we only have to find this part right here. So A is the negative 4.9, B is the 337, so a negative 337 over 2 times negative 4.9. We'll let the calculator crunch the numbers, we get 34.4 seconds. And you're done. You do not have to set this equal to this number here and work with an ugly equation to find the value. It's right here. It's going to happen at negative b over 2a. Right up there is when it reaches its highest point. And that concludes our 9.5.